Hey there, Alex here from Nintu. And in this video, we're gonna talk a little bit about Winden and go through all of the basics of how to install it on your WordPress instance and what the different settings are. In case you've never used or heard about Winden before, Winden is a plugin built by the awesome team at dPlugins and essentially allows you to use Tailwind as a CSS framework on WordPress without having to set up your own node server and do all the more complicated server side stuff that you wouldn't usually have to do on a WordPress instance. The way it works is you download Winden, you install it, and their team and their servers handle all of that complicated stuff. And if you've never used Tailwind before and are wondering what it is, well, at its core, it's essentially a utility CSS framework. What that means is it's a tool that allows you to style every single element on your website and maintain consistent uh, naming conventions, consistent coding conventions, as well as give you a lot of flexibility in the way that you can scale your website without ever having to worry about extra load times or extra bloat. Tailwind itself is a framework that I think was initially created in 2018, um, but really gained a lot of traction around the 2021 mark and has since then become the framework of choice and I think the most used framework in all modern website projects, and web development projects. We have a little look here at some of the statistics of Tailwind. Uh, you can see its inception when it started and around this point here was when they released their version two and that was when wide adoption really started. Currently, there's about 520,000 websites using Tailwind. To put that in a little bit of context, there's about 250,000 websites currently running Gutenberg. Um, so if you're worried about it not being a reliable or scalable framework, worry not. There is more than double the amount of people using Tailwind than there are using Gutenberg. So now we're gonna jump into our WordPress instance. I've got a demo instance here. And I'm gonna walk you through some of the plugin settings once it's installed, what they all mean, and how you can start using it. With Winden installed, you'll have a new tab on your dashboard right at the bottom called Winden. If we click on that, there are three main areas to this plugin. Base CSS file, config file, and the general settings. We're gonna start off with the general settings. So if we jump over to these general settings, we can see at the top here, we have our Tailwind CSS version and toggle between the different versions. For the most part, you don't need to worry about any breaking changes in updates. They get very well tested before they get pushed publicly and Winden only uses the latest public tested versions. You've then got a couple of integration settings. The first one is autocomplete. And autocomplete is essentially when you start typing a class name, it will suggest the rest or the different options for that class. Now I have autocomplete disabled by default because I have handy little CSS class cheat sheet that I use, which I'll share and show you next. And it prevents adding all of the other classes into your page builder, which can potentially slow the builder slide down. If you do wanna use it though, don't worry, it doesn't affect the end user's performance. It's purely on the building and admin side. We've then got some DQ options. So we can DQ all of the global inline styles for WordPress. And this is if you're not using anything that's currently set up with default WordPress, it simply gets rid of it and it doesn't load it up on the website. Then bricks, where we can DQ the front end and post specific CSS. In our case with Nintu, we leave them both enabled because we do use some of the default bricks tools such as pop-ups or menu builders um, and we integrate them in other ways. You can then also enable some options for Gutenberg and the autocomplete options for default bricks. Again, I have them disabled as a default. Now these last settings are the most important. Winden, it's critical that you understand how this works to make use of both Winden as well as any of the Nintu templates that you might be using. It's also the main reason why we use Winden as a plugin, not any other provider and also why we want Tailwind and what makes Tailwind so special of a CSS framework, why in my opinion it's better than any of the others on the market. Now, the way Tailwind or Winden works is essentially there's two versions of the CSS that's being loaded. 
is a CSS from the CDN or the framework from the CDN, which is essentially on every page refresh, it pulls the entire library into your browser uh, and then displays that. It's great to use when you're building out the website, when you're editing as an admin. The downside to this is you'll often see a short flash, CSS flash, when you load up a page because it's loading the page and then fetching the library and then displaying the correct styles. Don't worry though, because once you publish the site, none of this matters because it's all cached. So that's the first version. Everything is being pulled from the CDN. The second version is everything is being cached. Well, not quite everything. This is where Winden is special. Essentially what it does is it scans your website to figure out everything that you're using within the framework and then strips out everything that isn't being used. Keep it all super lean, clean, fast. The way this works is it sends a request over to the Winden servers. They will then run the Tailwind's just-in-time or JIT compiler, analyze the website and send back just the CSS files that are needed. So you're never ever loading any parts of the framework that are not being used on the site. That's really what makes Tailwind so great. You can build on the framework, you can expand the framework. They, the Tailwind team, can build and grow, develop new parts to it. You never need to worry like you do with other frameworks of it getting too large and bloating your site because they have this just-in-time compiler. It's only ever serving up what you are actually using. So looking at the settings here, you've got two toggles. When you are ready for production, use the cached CSS file instead of the CDN. What that means is that cached file that the server has scanned is what is being loaded to your website visitors. That's the fast version. And then don't use the cache minified CSS for admin role. This means is it's using the CDN file instead of that cache on the version that you're looking at when you're logged in as an admin. Now it can be a little bit confusing because the cached file doesn't automatically generate. You need to tell it when it needs to go, send it to the Winden servers to regenerate that cache and send it back to your site. So the way you'd use this in practice is you can keep both toggled on. As an admin, you're always seeing the latest version that's being pulled off the CDN network. And when you're ready to publish a page, you're ready to make that change for your visitors, you go over here and you click regenerate cache. Now we're gonna do this here. It takes about a minute to generate. So you can see at the top, it gives us a little message here saying the task has been queued. And if we jump back into our settings page, we can see it here as pending. So we'll give it 30 seconds and then we'll click that little refresh button. Ready, it's now refreshed. You can see it's got a success message when it was completed. And the rest of the details are really for the Winden team. So Josh or Marco, if you're ever trying to troubleshoot something, they may ask you for the ID or when the task was queued so that they can go check on the server side what was wrong. If you do ever run into errors, I find more often than not that something is misconfigured in your base CSS or config file. So if you are having an error problem, go check your config in your CSS file, make sure they are set up correctly. And if you're not sure what's going wrong, you can always go back to the Nintu knowledge base, recopy the base one, paste it over and update your brand colors. Now there's two other main tabs to the Winden plugin page. First is the base CSS and the second being the config page. Now we're not gonna dive into too much detail on how to use these in this video, but it's important that you understand what they are and how they work. The base CSS file is essentially a CSS file quite similar to what you would have with your theme CSS file, your appearance tab, or if you're adding a code block and additional CSS there. The only difference here is, is that it allows you to use some of the additional Tailwind utilities and functionality. A good example of this might be if you wanted to create a repeatable element, say you wanted to edit all of the borders on a card and you wanted to just have one class that you're using for that, you could configure that here with Tailwind's layer functionality. We'll dive more into that in the next video where I cover how to do templating. 
Second tab being the config file is essentially everything that we do to modify the core Tailwind framework. You can see by default with Winden, we apply some brand colors. So we have our primary and neutral colors, which are extended on top of the base Tailwind colors. We then have our fluid font size and our fluid spacing parameters and some default max width parameters. This is also the place that you'd configure additional plugins. Again, something for another video because it's a little bit more in depth and a little bit more complicated. Now I want to leave you with three more resources before you go. Those are generating additional colors, finding all the Tailwind utility classes, because there are a lot of them, and copy and pasting some base layouts. So starting with the colors. If you do a quick Google search on Tailwind CSS color generator, you'll see lots and lots of different results different generators that exist on the internet. My favorite one is this one by Simon Griggs, just because I think it looks really clean and it's very easy to use. Essentially, all you need to do here is plug in your primary brand color, maybe your secondary brand color, and even potentially your neutrals, and it will generate a palette for you with all 10 shades that are used throughout the Tailwind framework. To then use those colors, all you would need to do is copy the code here, and paste it back into your config file. If you want an example of that, I've got one over on the knowledge base on Winden, how to set up your own brand colors. Second tool that I like to keep handy is this cheat sheet. It's a cheat sheet by a team called Nerdcave, and it has all of the Tailwind utility classes that you can quickly search through. So if I wanted to say, look at what were all the different widths, that I could use, I could type in here, max dash W for max width. See it pops up all of the different variables and what are their default settings. Same if I wanted to find my different text sizes. Go text dash and see over here, font size, I've got all of my different font sizes. Great tool to keep handy, especially if you're just getting started with using Tailwind because it's really, really hard to remember all of these classes off the bat. Don't worry though, I reckon after your first project, most of them will be memorized. They're very, very similar to the way CSS is being named and it has a naming convention that kind of just makes sense, right? If you're looking for max width, you just max dash W and whatever number behind it. If you're looking for a color, it's color dash text um, background, border, dash, whatever shade you want to use. Same for the size, spacing, padding is like P dash, padding top is PT dash, and so on and so on. The last little resource that I've got for you are some basic layouts. You can quickly copy and paste. Uh, we host these on Mintu website and you don't need to be a member, they're open to anybody. And they essentially set up your sections, containers and grids without having to manually add different classes that you'd need to each one. The same goes for your typography. So if you head over here to the Nintu website, um, you don't need to log in at this point, just scroll down to the elements here. You can see we've got layouts, typography, and buttons. Just open these in separate tabs. And if you wanted to copy, let's say a heading, all you'd need to do is find the one that you want. Let's say I wanted this extra large one, Decide if you want it to be as a heading class or if you just want it to be as generic text. Click on the button and then you can jump over to your Bricks instance, Control V or right click paste or Command V if you're on a Mac uh, and that will paste it across. That will automatically also bring across all of the different utility classes on it as well as light mode and dark mode if you're using light and dark mode. Got the same here then for our body copy. You can copy that as a heading or as a text element uh, and an extra if you wanted to use dark mode. Jumping over to the layout side, it's pretty much the same thing here. We've got some sample layouts that you can quickly use on your project. Uh, these are all responsive as well, so they'll scale correctly on the different device sizes. All you need to do is click here, copy, jump over to bricks, paste, paste it across. 
Again, this time we have two variations, one which are sections, so that will copy the section, container, and the grid inside of it. Auto apply all the right paddings and widths and margins that you need. If you scroll down a little bit, we've got elements, which are essentially the same things, but without the section and container, and you'd use that in a case, for example, that you wanted to have this as your section, and then within that section, you wanted to split this off. Instead of having to do it manually, you could go and find how you wanted to split it, copy that, and paste it inside of that element. That is pretty much it for the overview of Winden. Um, so I hope you enjoyed the video. In short, we've pretty much covered what Winden is, its base settings and setup, why we like to use it and why it's so cool, uh, and some good useful resources to get you started. Let me know if you have any questions uh, or if you have any other video ideas. Um, they help out a lot. And otherwise, I'll catch you in the next one.